15 years. In some ways, it feels like a lot longer. In others, it feels like it was just yesterday. But as we approach the 15th anniversary of the CIA Officers Memorial Foundation, I think it's particularly important to remember how the organization came to be, how it has grown to be what it is today, and how its future is more vital than ever. Everyone remembers the terrible attacks of September 11th. As Americans, we pulled together and vowed to do everything we could to bring those responsible to justice and to prevent another assault against the United States. When the President of the United States wanted to respond, he turned to the Central Intelligence Agency to take the lead on going after Al-Qaeda and the Taliban, and we were ready. That meant going into Afghanistan. Action needed to be swift, and the message needed to be clear. The attack against our homeland would not stand. Within days, the agency presented the president with a bold plan. At that time, the leaders of the agency's counterterrorism center told us to plan on victory, but to be prepared that there would be CIA officers who would not make it home alive. They were right about the victory. Unfortunately, they were also right about the heavy price that came with it. On November 25, 2001, two CIA officers were interviewing captured Taliban members at the Kalajangi Fortress when some of the prisoners overpowered their Afghan guards and attacked. The two CIA officers fought back heroically, but sadly one of them was killed. Johnny Michael Spann was the first American to die in Afghanistan. The Central Intelligence Agency confirmed today that one of its covert field officers was killed Sunday near Mazar-e-Sharif in northern Afghanistan, the first American combat death in the war. I was CIA director at the time. In the days following Mike's death, I was scheduled to meet with President Musharraf in Pakistan. On my return, we arranged to have our plane diverted to Germany to bring home Mike's remains. That day at Andrews was bitterly cold. I remember the heartbreaking scene of Mike's widow, Shannon, herself a CIA officer, Mike's three young children, and his parents boarding the aircraft for a private moment before Mike's casket was removed. My wife, Stephanie, and many of Mike's colleagues were present to lend their support. There were more hard, cold days to come. None more poignant than the day Mike Spann was given a hero's funeral at Arlington National Cemetery. From his earliest days, Mike not only knew what was right, he worked to do what was right. At home and school in Alabama, as a United States Marine, as an officer of the Central Intelligence Agency and as the head of his own young family. And it was in the quest for right that Mike, at his country's call, went to Afghanistan, to that place of danger and terror he sought to bring justice and freedom. I want to tell you that my husband is a hero, but Mike, is a hero not because of the way that he died, but rather because of the way that he lived. Mike was prepared to give his life in Afghanistan because he already gave his life every day to us at home. Through the sadness and the grief, there was also a grim realization that Mike Spann's death could be the first of many the CIA might experience in a post 9-11 world. At that time, the agency was only able to pay the basic benefits following the death of an officer and was not in a position to support the children and later the spouses of our fallen brothers and sisters with educational benefits. That's when some of the agency's most prominent alumni, former director Richard Helms, Legendary case officers 
Jack Downing, Lloyd Salvetti, and former General Counsel Jeff Smith, and others agreed to set up the CIA Officers Memorial Foundation to raise funds to make sure that children like Mike Spans would not have to worry about pursuing their dreams. Shannon Spann herself was instrumental in the foundation's creation. At the most difficult moment in her life, she recognized that the foundation would ensure Mike's lasting legacy of service and heroism. Shannon inspired all of us. Since those early days, the CIA families of the fallen have soldiered on, and the CIA Officers Memorial Foundation has grown stronger in meeting its mission. By the end of 2015, more than 70 children have taken advantage of the Foundation's commitment to help make their dreams of an education a reality. And sadly, there are more than 100 young people already known who will be depending on the Foundation in the coming years. The Foundation has also expanded to support some of the spouses of fallen officers. But none of this would be possible without the support of you, our donors. Thanks to your dedication and generosity, the families of our fallen officers are getting the education they need for a bright future. It has allowed all of us to never break a sacred commitment to look after the family members of our fallen heroes. This is what a family does. Some of our students have gone on to become teachers, lawyers, intelligence officers, and even newscasters. There are so many from all walks of life who have given so generously, who recognize the sacrifice and silent service of the men and women of CIA. Without you, there is so much good work that would never have occurred. Because of you, young men and women and spouses know that the future is bright. We need you now more than ever to allow us to remain vibrant, to expand on the solemn promise that the CIA Officers Memorial Foundation made 15 years ago. Thank you, and may God bless you all.